My brother. He is an Elysium. Perchance he is not drowned. What think you? It was only perchance that you yourself were saved. My poor brother. And so perchance may he be. True, my lady. To comfort you with chance, assure yourself when the ship did split, I sign hold acquaintance with the waves until I could no longer see. For saying so, there's thanks. Country friend, is this? Ah, this is Illyria. And what should I do in Illyria? Knowest thou this country? <laughs> well, I was born and bred not three hours from this very place. Governs here? Orsino. Orsino. I have heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. On if so now, and was of so late. For but a month I traveled hence, and upon my turn, fresh murmurings, he to seek the love of fair Olivia. But she? Uh, a virtuous maid, daughter of a count who died some 12 months since, then leaving her the protection of his son, well, her brother, who shortly also died, and through whose true love they say she has admitted all acquaintance and company of men. Oh, that I served that lady, and might not be delivered to the world till I had made mine own occasion mellow. What my estate is. That will be hard to compass, because she will admit no suit <laughs> no, not even the Dukes. I prithee, and I'll pay thee bounteously. Conceal me what I am, and be my aid for such disguise as haply shall become the form of my intent. I'll serve this Duke. It may be worth thy pains. For I can sing and speak to him in many forms of music that will allow me very worth his service. What else may hap, to time I will commit. Only shape thou thy silence to my wit. If music be the food of love, play on! Give me excess of it that surfeiting the appetite may sicken and so die. That strain again, it, it had a dying fall. Oh, it came o'er my ear like the sweet sound that breathes upon a bank of violets, stealing and giving odor.
Enough! No more! It is not so sweet now as it was before. Oh, spirit of love. How quick and fresh art thou that notwithstanding thy capacity receiveth as the sea not enters there of what validity and pitch soe'er but falls into abatement and low price even in a minute so full of shapes is fancy that it alone is high fantastical will you go hunt my lord what the heart why so i do the noblest that i have Oh, in mine eyes did see Olivia first. Methought she purged the air of pestilence. That moment was I who turned into a heart, and my desires like fell and cruel hounds ere since pursue me. How now? What news from her? What a plague means my niece to mourn the passing of her brother thus. I am sure care is an enemy to life. By my troth, Sir Toby, you must come in earlier, O night. My lady takes great exception to your ill hours. Well, let her accept before accepted. Aye, but you must confine yourself within the modest limits of order. Confine? I'll confine myself no finer than I am. These clothes are good enough to drink in, and so be these boots, too. That quaffing and drinking will undo you. I heard my lady talk of it yesterday. And of a foolish knight you brought in here one night to be her wooer? Who? Sir Andrew? Aye, he. Why, he's as tall as any man in Illyria. What's that to the purpose? Fie that you would say so. Why, he speaks three or four languages, word for word, without book, and has all the finer gifts of nature. He hath indeed almost natural, for besides that he's a fool, he's a great quarreler. Tis thought among the prudent, he would quickly have the gift of a grave. By this hand, they are scoundrels and subtractors who would say so of him. Who are they? They that add, moreover, he's drunk nightly in your company. With drinking healths to my niece? And I'll continue to drink to her health, so long as there is passage in my throat and drink in Illyria. Sir Toby Belch! Sweet Sir Andrew! Whoa. Oh, bless you, fair shrew. And you too, sir. A cost, Sir Andrew, a cost. What's that? My niece's chambermaid. Good mistress, a cost. I desire your better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Good mistress, Mary, a cost. You mistake, sir. A cost means to front her, board her, woo her, assail her. By my troth, I would not undertake her in this company. Is that the meaning of a cost? Fare you well, gentlemen. Can thou let her part so, Sir Andrew? And part you so, mistress? Fair lady, do you think you have fools in hand? Sir, I have not you by the hand. Mary, but you shall have. And here's my hand. 
Now, sir, thought is free. I pray you, bring your hand to the buttery bar and let it drink. Wherefore, sweetheart? It's dry, sir. Well, I think so. I am not such an ass, but I can keep my hand dry. But what's your jest? A dry jest, sir. Are you full of them? Aye, sir. Now I let go your hand. Oh, dear knight. Thou lackest a cup of cannery. When did I see thee so put down? <laughs> Never in your life, I think. Unless you see cannery put me down. Methinks sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian or an ordinary man has. But I am a great eater of beef, and believe that does harm to my wit. No question. I'll ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Pourquoi, my dear knight? What is pourquoi? Do? Or not do? Would I had spent that time I had on the tongues that I have in fencing, dancing, and bear baiting? Had I but followed the arts. Faith, I'll home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Your niece will not be seen. Or if she be, four to one she'll none of me. The Count himself here hard by woos her. She'll none of the Count. She'll not match above her degree, neither in estate, years, nor wit. I've heard her swear it. There's life in it, man. I'm a fellow of the strangest mind in the world. I'll stay a month longer. If the Duke continues these favors towards you, Cesario, you are like to be much advanced. He has not known you three days, and already you are no stranger. You either fear his humor or my negligence that you call in question the continuance of his love. Is he inconstant, sir, in his favors? <laughs> no. Believe me. I thank you. Here comes the Count. Who saw Cesario, ho? Of your attendance, my lord, here. I have unclasped to thee the book even of my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, address thy gate unto her. Be not denied access. Stand at her door and tell them there thy fixed foot shall grow till thou have audience. Sure, my noble lord, if she be so abandoned to her sorrow as it is spoke, she never will admit me. Be clamorous and leap all civil bounds rather than make unprofited return. Say I do speak with her, my lord, what then? Oh, then unfold the passion of my love. Surprise her with discourse of my faith. It shall become thee well to act my woes. She will attend it better in thy youth than in annuncios of more grave aspect. I think not so, my lord. Dear lad, believe it. For they shall yet belie the happy years that say thou art a man. Diana's lip is not more smooth and rubious. Thy small pipe is as the maiden's organ, shrill and sound, and all is semblative a woman's part. I know thy constellation is right apt for this affair. Some attend him, all if you will. For I myself am best when least in company. Prosper well in this, and thou shalt live as freely as thy lord, to call his fortunes thine. I'll do my best to your lady. Yet a barful strife. Where I woo myself would be his wife. (sighs) 
Nay, either tell me where thou hast been, or I will not open my lips so wide as a bristle may enter in way of thy excuse. My lady will hang thee for thy absence. Let her hang me. She who's well hanged in this world needs to hear no colors. <laughs> We're so troubled to leave drinking. That would be as witty a piece of these flesh as any in Illyria. Peace, you rogue. No more of that. Here comes my lady. Make your excuses wisely. You were best. God bless thee, Madonna! Take the fool away. Take away the lady. Go to. You're a dry fool. I'll know more of you. Besides, you grow dishonest. Good Madonna, give me leave to prove you a fool. Can you do it? Dexterously, good Madonna. Good Madonna, why mournest thou? Good fool for my brother's death? I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool. Then more the fool to mourn for your brother's soul in heaven. Take away the fool! What think you of this fool, Malvolio? Doth she not mend? I marvel that your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. I saw her put down the other day with an ordinary fool who has no more brain than a stone. You are sick of self-love, Malvolio, and do taste with a distempered appetite. There is no slander in an allowed fool, though she do nothing but rail. <laughs> Nor no railing in a known discreet man, though he do nothing but reprove. Now Mercury and do thee with least seem for thou speakest well of fools. Madam, there is at the gate a young gentleman much desires to speak with you. From the Count Orsino, is it? I know not, madam. Who of my people holds him in delay? Sir Toby. Fetch him off, I pray you. Go you, Malvolio. If it be a suit from the Count, I am sick or not at home. What you will to dismiss it. Now you see, sis, how your fooling grows old and people dislike it. Thou hast spoke for us, Madonna, as though thy firstborn son should be a fool, whose skull Jove cram with brains for- Oh, here he comes. By mine honor, half drunk. What is he at the gate, uncle? A gentleman. A gentleman. What kind of gentleman? It is a gentleman here. Uh, let him be the devil, and he will. I care not. What's a drunken man like, fool? Like a drowned man, a fool, and a madman. One drought above heat makes him a fool, the second mads him, and the third drowns him. Go seek the crowner and let him sit or my cuz, for he's in the third degree of drink and he's drowned. Go look after him. He's but mad yet, Madonna, and the fool shall look to the madman. He's fortified against any denial. Madam, yon young fellow swears he will speak with you. Tell him he shall not speak with me. Has been told so, and he says he will stand at your door like a sheriff's post and be the supporter to a bench, but he will speak with you. What kind of man is he? Why, of mankind. What manner of man? Not old enough for a man, nor young enough for a boy. Between boy and man. Let him approach. Call in my gentlewoman. Gentlewoman, my lady calls. Come give me my veil. Throw it o'er my face. We'll once more hear from Orsino's embassy. <laughs> The Honorable Lady of the House, which is she? If I do not usurp myself, I am. I will on with my speech in your praise, and then show you the heart of my message. Come to what is important in it, I forgive you the praise. If you be not mad, be gone. If you have reason, be brief. Tis not the time of the moon with me to make so skipping a dialogue. Sweet lady, tell me your mind. I am a messenger. Speak your office. It alone concerns your ear. What are you? What would you? What I am and what I would are sacred as maidenhead. To your ears, divinity, to any others, profanation. Give us this place alone. We will hear this divinity. Good 
Madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text. But we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir. Is it not well done? Excellently done. You've got it all. Were you sent hither to praise me? I see you what you are. You are too proud. But if you were the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. Oh, such love could be but recompense, though you were crowned the non of beauty. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. Though I suppose him virtuous, know him noble, of great estate, of fresh and stainless youth, and yet I cannot love him. He might have taken this answer long ago. If I did love you, my master's flame, I would not understand it. Why, what would you? You might do well. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state as well. I am a gentleman. <laughs> Get thee to your lord. I cannot love him. Let him send no more. Unless, perchance, you come to me again to tell me how he takes it. Fare thee well. Love make his heart of flint that you shall love. What is your parentage? Above my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. I'll be sworn thou art. Thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, thy actions, thy spirit do give thee fivefold blazon. Soft, soft. Unless the master were the man. How now? Methinks I feel this youth's perfections with an invisible and subtle stealth to creep in at mine eyes. What ho, Malvolio? Madam, at your service. Run after that same peevish messenger. He left this ring behind him. Tell him I'll none of it. I am not for him. If that the youth will come this way tomorrow, I'll give him reasons for it. Hide thee, Malvolio. Madam, I will. Ahem. Were not you even now with the Countess Olivia? Even now, sir. At a moderate pace, I have since arrived, but hither. She returns this ring to you, sir. You might have saved me my pains to have taken it away yourself. She adds, moreover, that you should put your master into a desperate assurance that she will none of him. And, one thing more, that you be never so hardy to come again in his affairs unless it be to report your lord's taking of this. Receive it so. She took the ring of me? I'll none of it. Come, sir. You peevishly threw it to her. And her will is it should be so returned. If it be worth stooping for, there it lies in your eyes. If not, be it his that finds it. I left no ring with her! <sighs> what means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside have not charmed her. I am the man. If it be so, as tis, poor lady, she were better love a dream. Disguise I see thou art a wickedness. My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fond as much on him, and she mistaken seems to dote on me. What will become of this? Oh, time, thou must untangle this, not I. It is too hard a knot for me to untie. Hey. 
<clears throat> Approach, Sir Andrew. Not to be a bed after midnight is to be a bed betimes. Nay, for my troth, I know not. But I do know to be up late is to be up late? A false conclusion. I hate it as an unfilled can. To be up after midnight and then to bed is to be early. So to be a bed after midnight is to be a bed betimes. Mm. Therefore, let us eat and drink. Marion, a stoop of wine. Here comes the fool, in faith. Welcome, ass. Let's have a catch. Excellent. This is the best fooling when all's done. What a caterwauling do you keep here? If my lady hath not called up her steward Malvolio and bid him turn you out of doors, never trust me. My lady's a Catean. We are politicians. Malvolio's a peg -a ramsey And three merry men be we. Am I not consanguinous? Am I not of her blood? Tilly Valley Lady. <laughs> Beshrew me, the knight's an admirable fooling. Aye, he does well enough if he be disposed. And so do I too. He does it with a better grace, but I do it more natural. For the love of God, peace. My masters, are you mad or what are you? Have you no wit, manners, nor honesty, but to gabble like tinkers at this hour of night? And do you make an alehouse of my lady's house, that ye squeak out your cozier's catches without any mitigation or remorse of voice? Is there no respect of place, persons, nor time in you? We did keep our time, sir, in our catches. Sneck up! Sir Toby, my lady bade me tell you that though she harbors you as her kinsman, she's nothing allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself and your misdemeanors, you are welcome to the house. If not, she is very willing to bid you farewell. Ye lie. Art thou more than a steward? Dost thou think because thou art virtuous that there will be no more cakes and ale? A stoop of wine, Maria. Mistress Mary, if you prize my lady's favor at anything more than contempt, you would not give means for this uncivil rule. She shall know of it by this hand. Sweet Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. Since the youth of the Counts was today with thy lady, she is much out of quiet. For Monsieur Malvolio, let me alone with him. The devil's a Puritan that he is, or anything constantly but a time pleaser, an affectioned ass. The best persuaded of himself, so crammed as he thinks with excellencies, that it is his grounds of faith that all that look on him love him. And on that vice in him will my revenge find notable cause to work. What wilt thou do? I will drop in his way some obscure epistles of love. I can write very like my lady your niece, on a forgotten matter, we can hardly make distinction of our hands. Excellent. I smell a device. I have it in my nose, too. <laughs> he will think, mm -hmm. by the letters that thou wilt draw, that they come from my niece and that she loves him. My purpose is indeed a horse of that color. And your horse will make of him an ass. I warrant you, I know my physic will work with him. I will plant you two, and let the fool make a third where he shall find the letter. Observe his construction of it. For this night, to bed, and dream on the event. Farewell. She's a beagle. True bread. And one that adores me. What at that?
Now, good Cesario, if ever thou dost love and the sweet pangs of it, remember me. For such as I am, all true lovers are unstayed and skittish in all motions else, save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. How dost thou like this tune? It gives a very echo to the seat where love is throned. Thou dost speak masterly. My life upon it. Young though thou art, thine eye has stayed upon some favor that it loves, hath it not, boy? A little by your favor. What kind of woman is it? Of your complexion. She is not worth thee, then. How many years in faith? About your years, my lord. <laughs> Too old by heaven. Let still a woman take an elder than herself. So wears she to him. So sways she level in her husband's heart. For, boy, however we do praise ourselves, our fancies are more giddy and unfirm, more longing. Wavering, sooner lost and worn than women's are. I think it well, my lord. Then let thy love be younger than thyself, for thy affection cannot hold the bent. For women are as roses, whose fair flower once displayed doth fall that very hour. And so they are. Alas, that they are so, to die even when they to perfection grow. Once more, Cesario, get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her my love, more noble than the world. But if she cannot love you, sir, I cannot be so answer it. Sooth, but you must say that some lady as perhaps there is, hath for your love a great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her. You tell her so. Must she not then be answered? There's no woman's sides can bide the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. No woman's heart so big to hold so much, they lack retention. Alas, their love may be called appetite. No motion of the liver, but the palate that suffers surfeit, cloyment, and revolt. Make no compare between the love a woman can bear me and that I owe Olivia. I, but I know. What dost thou know? Too well what love women to men may owe. In faith, they are as true of heart as we. My father had a daughter loved a man. As it might be, perhaps, were I a woman, I should your lordship. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love, but let concealment, like a worm in the bud, feed on her damask cheek. She pined in thought, and like a green and yellow melancholy, she sat like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was not this love indeed? We men may say more, swear more, for indeed our shows are more than will, for still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. But died thy sister of her love, my boy? I am all the daughters of my father's house. And all the brothers, too, and yet I know not. Sir, shall I to this lady? I. That's the theme. To her in haste, give her this jewel. Say my love can give no place. Bide no denay.
Sebastian? Will you stay no longer? No, will you not that I go with you? You must know me then, Antonio. Myself and a sister, both born in the hour. Had the heavens been so pleased when we had so ended, but you, sir, altered that. For some hour before you drew me from the breach of the sea was my sister drowned. Alas, the day. Bloody, sir. Though it was said she much resembled me, was yet of many accounted beautiful. She bore a mind that envy could not but call fair. She is drowned already, sir, with salt water, though I do seem to drown her remembrance again with more. Oh, good Antonio, forgive me your trouble. If you will not murder me for my love, let me be your servant. If you will not undo what you have done, that is. I am bound to the Count Orsino's court. I have many enemies in Orsino's court. Else I would see thee very shortly. But come what may, I do adore thee so. That danger shall seem sport, and I will go. Come thy way, Signor Fabian? Nay, I'll come. If I lose scruple of this sport, let me be boiled to death with melancholy. Wouldst thou not be glad to see this miserly, rascally, sheep-biter come to some notable shame? I would exalt, man. You know he led me out of favor with my lady about a bear-baiting here. To anger him, we'll have the bear again, and we'll fool him, black and blue. Shall we not? Sir Andrew. And we do not, it is the pity of our lives. Oh, here comes the little villain now. Get ye all into the box tree. Malvolio's coming down this walk. Observe him for the love of mockery. Here's an Orweening rogue. The peace. Contemplation makes a rare turkey cock of him. Look how he jets under his advanced plumes. Slide, I could so beat the rogue. A peace, I say. <sighs> to be Count Malvolio. There is example for it. The lady of the Strachy married the yeoman of the wardrobe. Oh, for a stone bow to hit him in the eye. Having been three months married to her, sitting in my state, calling my officers about me in my branched velvet gown, having come from a daybed where I have left my Olivia sleeping. Oh, fire and brimstone. Peace, peace. And then, to have the humor of state, and after a demur travel of regard, telling them, I know my place as I would they should do theirs. Two, for my kinsman Toby, and seven of my people set out on an obedient start. And I frown the while and perchance wind up watch or play with my, <laughs> some rich jewel. <laughs> Toby approaches, courtesies there to me. Oh, shall this fellow live? I extend my hand to him thus, quenching my familiar smile with an austere regard of control. And does Toby give you a blow about the lips there? <laughs> <laughs> Saying, Cousin Toby, my fortunes haven't cast me upon thy niece. What? Give me what? this prerogative of speech. You must amend your drunkenness. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Peace, we break the sinews of our plot. Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with this foolish knight. That's me, I warrant you. One Sir Andrew. I know it was I! For many do call me a fool. What employment have we here? By my life. 
This is my lady's hand. These be her very C's, her U's, and her T's. Oh, and thus makes she her great P's. It is her hand. Her C's, her U's, and her T's? Why that? This wins him liver and all. Excellent wench, say I. Soft, here follows prose. If this fall into thy hand, revolve. In my stars I am above thee, but be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. Thy fates open their hands. Be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. <gasps> remember who commended thy yellow stockings and wished to see thee ever cross gartered. I say, remember, go to thou art made if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still the fellow of servants, and not worthy to touch fortune's fingers, farewell. I will baffle Sir Toby. I will wash off gross acquaintance. I will be point devise the very man. For every reason excites to this, that my lady loves me. Here is yet a postscript. Therefore, in my presence still smile, dear my sweet, I prithee. <laughs> Job, I thank thee. I will smile. I will do everything thou wilt have me. give my part of the sports for a pension of thousands. Uh, I could marry this wench for this device. Uh, so could I too. And ask no other dowry except another such jest. Nor I neither. <laughs> Here comes my noble gull catcher. Hey! Shall I play my freedom at Trey Trip and become thy bond slave? If faith or I either. Nay, but say true, does it work upon him? Like aqua vitae. Uh, if you will then see the fruits of the sport, mark his first approach before my lady. He will come to her in yellow stockings, and tis a color she abhors, and cross-gartered, a fashion she detests. And he will smile upon her, which will now be so unsuitable to her disposition, being addicted to a melancholy as she is, it cannot but turn him into a notable contempt. Oh, thou most excellent devil of wit. <laughs> Save thee, friend, and thy spider. I warned thou art a merry fellow, and carest for nothing. Not so, sir. I do care for something. However, in my conscience, sir, I do not care for you. Would that be to care for nothing? I would that it make you invisible. Art not thou the Lady Olivia's fool? <laughs> no, indeed, sir. The Lady Olivia has no folly! She will keep no fool, sir. Indeed, I'm not her fool, but rather her corrupter of words. Foolery does walk the orb like the sun, sir. It shines everywhere. Nay, and thou pass upon me. I'll no more with thee. Now Jove and his next commodity of hair send thee a beard. My lady is within. I will construe to her whence you came. Who you are and what you were out of my welkin. I might say element, but the word is overworn. Save you, gentlemen. And you, sir. Will you encounter the house? My niece is desirous you should enter, if your trade be with her. I am bound to your niece, sir. I mean, she is the list of my voyage. Well, then, taste your legs, sir. Put them in motion. My legs do better understand me, sir, than I understand what you mean by bidding me taste my legs. I mean for you to go, sir, to enter. I will answer with gate and entrance, but we are prevented. Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my hearing. Give me thy hand, sir. My duty, madam, in most humble service. <laughs> what 
is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, fair princess. My servant, sir? Your servant to the Count Orsino. You. And he is yours, and his must needs be yours. Your servant's servant is your servant, madam. For him, I think not on him. For his thoughts would they were blanks rather than filled with me. Madam, I come to wet your gentle thoughts on his behalf. By your leave, I pray you, I bade you never speak again of him. Dear lady. Give me leave, I beseech you. I did send, after the last enchantment you did hear, a ring in chase of you. So let me hear you speak. I pity you. There's a degree to love? No, not a grise. For tis a vulgar proof that very oft we pity enemies. Why then? Methinks tis time to smile again. O oh world, how apt the poor are to be proud. Be not afraid, good youth, I will not have you. And yet, when wit and youth is come to harvest, your wife is like to reap a proper man. There lies your way, to west. Then westward ho. Grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. You'll nothing, madam, to my lord by me. Hey, I pity. Tell me what thou thinkest of me. That you do think you are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. And think you right. I am not what I am. I would you were as I would have you be. Would it be better, madam, than I am? <laughs> I would it might, for now I am your fool. Oh, what a deal of scorn looks beautiful in the contempt and anger of his lip. Cesario, hide the roses of spring by maidenhood. Honor, truth, everything, I love thee. So, no wit, no reason can my passion hide. Do not extort thy reasons from this clause, for that I do doubt therefore has no cause. Rather, reason thus with reason fetter. Love sought is good, but given unsought is better. By innocence, I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, and that no woman has, nor never none shall mistress be of it, save I alone. And so adieu, good madam, nevermore will I my master's tears to deplore. Yet come again, for thou mayest move that heart which now bores to like his love. No! Faith, I'll stay not a jot longer. The reason, dear Venom, give thy reason. You must needs yield your reason, Sir Andrew. Mary, I saw your niece do more favors upon the Count's serving man than ever she bestowed upon me. Did she see you the while, old man? As plain as I see you now. This was a great argument of love in her towards you. Slight, will you make an ass of me? I will prove it legitimate, sir. Upon the oaths of judgment and reason. She did show favor to the youth in your sight, only to exasperate you, to awaken your dormouse valor, to put fire in your heart and brimstone in your liver. How shall I feast him? What bestow of him? For youth is bought more oft than begged or borrowed. Oh, I speak too loud. Where is Malvolio? He is sad and civil and suits well for a servant with my fortunes. He's coming, madam, but in very strange manner. He is sure possessed, madam. Why? What's the matter? Does he rave? No, madam. He does nothing but smile. Your ladyship were best to have some guard about you. If he come for sure, the man's taint in his wits. Go call him hither. Why then? Build thy fortunes upon the basis of valor. Challenge me, the Count's youth, to fight with him. Hurt him in eleven places. My niece shall take note of it. And assure thyself, no love broker in the world can prevail in man's commendation with woman than a report of valor. There is no way but this, Sir Andrew. Will either of you bear me a challenge toward him? Go then. Write it in a martial hand. Oh. But be cursed and brief. It is no matter how witty, but be eloquent and fun of invention. Taunt him with license of ink. Where shall I find you? We'll call thee. We shall receive a rare letter from him, but you'll not deliver it. 
Never trust me then. <laughs> but spur on the youth to an answer. For Andrew, if he were cracked open, and you find so much blood in his liver as would clog the foot of a flea, I'll eat the rest of the anatomy. <laughs> and his opposite, the youth, bears in his visage no great presage of cruelty. <laughs> you desire the spleen and will laugh yourself in the stitches. Come with me. Yon gold Malvolio has turned heathen. He's in yellow stockings. And cross garter? Most villainously. I have dogged him like his murderer. Come. Bring us, bring us where he is. How now, Malvolio? Sweet lady, ho ho. Smilest thou, I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Sad lady? I could be sad. Well, this does make some obstruction in the blood, this cross guardery. But what of that? How dost thou, man? What is the matter with thee? Not black in my mind, though yellow in my legs. Wilt thou go to bed, Malvolio? To bed, I, sweetheart, and I'll come to thee. Be not afraid of greatness, t'was well writ. What meanest thou? Some are born great, <laughs> some achieve greatness. What sayest thou? And some have greatness thrust upon them. <gasps> <gasps> Heaven restore thee. Good Mariah, let this fellow be looked to. Where's my cousin Toby? Let some of my people take good care of him. No worse man than Sir Toby to look to me. This concurs directly with the letter. She sends him on purpose so that I may appear stubborn to him. For she incites me to that in the letter. Be opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants. I have limed her. But it is Job's doing, and Job make me thankful. And when she went away now, let this fellow be looked to. Fellow. How do you, Malvolio? Not by my will have troubled you, but since you make your pleasure of your pains, I will no further chide you. My kind Antonio, I can no other answer make but thanks. And thanks. What's to do? Shall we go to the reliques of this town? Well, tomorrow, sir, best first go see your lodging. I am not weary, and tis long tonight. I pray you let us satisfy our eyes with the memorials and things of fame that do renown this city. Will you pardon me? I do not without danger walk these streets. Once in a sea fight against the Countess Galleys I did some service. Of such note indeed, if I were taken here, it would scarce be answered. Belike you slew great number of his people. The offense is not such a bloody nature. Albeit the quality of the time and quarrel might well, given this bloody argument. It might have been answered in repaying what we took from them, which, for traffic's sakes, most of our city did. Only myself stood out. So if I be lapsed in this place, I shall pay dear. Do not then walk to It open. does not fit me. Hold, sir. Here's my purse. South of the suburbs, at the Elephant, is the best to lodge. I will bespeak our diet while you beguile the time and feed your knowledge with the viewings of the town. There you shall have me. Why are your purse? Happily your eyes shall light upon some toy you desire to purchase. And your store, I think, is not for idle markets, sir. I'll be your purse bearer and leave you for an hour. Here is the challenge. Read it. I warrant there's pepper and vinegar in it. Is it so saucy? Aye, is it? I warrant him. Do but read. Uh, give me. Youth, whatsoever thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Good, and valiant. 
wonder not, nor admire not in thy mind, why I do call thee so, for I will show thee no reason for it. A good note. That will keep you from the blow of the law. Thou comest to the Lady Olivia, and in my sight she uses thee kindly, but thou liest in thy throat. That is not the matter I challenge thee for. Very brief. I will waylay thee going home, where if it be thy chance to kill me... Good. Thou killest me like a rogue and a villain. Fare thee well, and God have mercy upon one of our souls. He may have mercy upon mine, but my hope is better, and so look to thyself. Thy friend, as thou usest him, and thy sworn enemy, Andrew Rogerchi. Well, if this letter will not move him, uh, his legs cannot. Yes! I'll give to him. Now, go, Sir Andrew. If thou seest him, draw. And if thou drawst, uh, swear horribly. Now, away. Nay? Let me alone for swearing. <laughs> and now will I not deliver his letter. <laughs> for the young gentleman's behavior gives him out to be of good capacity and breeding. His employment between his lord and my niece shows no less. Therefore, this letter, being so excellently ignorant, will breed no terror in the youth. He will see it comes from a clock pole. Oh, but sir, I will deliver his challenge. By word of mouth, set upon Augur cheek some notable report of valor, and drive the gentleman, as his youth will aptly receive it, into some hideous opinion of rage, skill, fury, and impetuosity. <laughs> this will fright them both so that they will kill one another with a look. <laughs> Here he comes with your niece. I uh, will meditate a while upon some horrid message for a challenge. Here, wear this jewel for me. Tis my picture. Refuse it not, it hath no tongue to vex you. And I beseech you, come again tomorrow. What shall you ask of me that I'll deny that honor saved may upon asking give? Nothing but this, your true love for my master. How by mine honor can I give him that which I have given to you? I will quit you. Come again tomorrow. Fare thee well. Fiend like thee might bear my soul to hell. Gentlemen, God save thee. And you, sir? Uh, that defense thou hast? Betake thee to it. Of what nature the wrongs are thou hast done him, I, I know not. But the interceptor, full of despite and bloody as the hunter, attends you at Orchard's End. You mistake, sir. I am sure no man hath any quarrel to me. My remembrance is very free and clear of any image of offense done to any man. You'll find it otherwise, I'm certain. Therefore, if you hold your life at any price, you will take to your guard, for your opposite hath within him what youth, skill, strength, and 
Wrath can't furnish a man with all. I pray you, sir, what is he? He is knight. He is very devil in private brawl. Souls and bodies hath he divorced three. And his incessant at this moment is so implacable that satisfaction can be none except by pangs of death and sepulcher. I will again into the house and desire some conduct of the lady. I am no fighter. I have heard of some kind of men that put quarrels purposely on others to taste their valor. Belike, this is a man of that quirk? Sir, no. His indignation derives itself from a very competent injury. Therefore, get you on and give him his desire. Back you shall not to the house, unless you undertake with me that which with safety you might answer him. Therefore, get you on and strip your sword naked, for metal you must, that is certain, or forswear to wear iron about you. is the very devil. I have never seen such a farrago. And on the answer, he pays as surely as the ground that your boots step on. They say he was fencer to the Sophie. I will not meddle with him. There is no pacifying him. Fabian can scarce hold him yonder. Plague on it. I'll make the match. There's no remedy for it, sir. He will fight with you for oath's sake. Therefore, draw. Pray God defend me. A little thing would make me tell them how much I lack of a man. Come, Sir Andrew, there's no remedy for it. He will have one bout with you, for honor's sake. He has promised, as a gentleman and a soldier, he will not hurt you. So come, do it. Up your sword. If this young gentleman have done offense, I take the fault on me. If you offend him, I for him defy you. You, sir? Why, what are you? One, sir. That for his love yet dares do more than you have heard him brag to you, he will. Nay, if you be an undertaker, I am for you. Pray, sir, put up your sword if you please. Mary, will I, sir? Antonio, I arrest thee at the suit of Count Orsino. You do mistake me, sir. Oh, no, sir. Not a jot. I know your favor well, though now you wear no sea cap on your head. I must obey. This comes from seeking you. Well, there's no remedy. I must answer it. What will you do? Now my necessity makes me ask you for my purse. It grieves me much more for what I cannot do for you than what befalls myself. You look amazed, but be of comfort. Come, sir, away. I must entreat you for some money. What money, sir? 
for the fair kindness you have showed me, and, part, being prompted by your present trouble out of my lean and low ability, I'll lend you something. My having is not much. I'll make division of my present with you. Hold. There's half my coffer. You deny me now? Is it possible that my deserts to you lack persuasion? I know of none, nor know I you by voice or any feature. Oh, heavens and so Come, sir, I pray you go. No, let me speak a little. This youth that you see here, I snatch one half out of the jaws of death. Sebastian, done good, features shame. Virtue is beautiful, but the beauteous evil are empty trunks overflourished by the devil. Away, away, sir, come. Lead me on. He named Sebastian. Even such and so in favor was my brother. And went he still in this fashion, color, ornament, for him I imitate. Oh, if it prove, tempests are kind, and salt waves fresh in love. Come hither, knight. Come hither, Fabian. A coward, a most devout coward, religious in it. Slid all after him again, and beat him. Do, cuff him soundly, uh, but never draw thy sword. And I knew not. <laughs> Come, let's see the event. <laughs> Do not have me believe that I'm not sent for you. Go to, go to, thou art a foolish fellow. Let me be clear of thee. <sighs> well held out in faith. No, I do not know you. Nor am I sent for you by my lady to bid speak with her. Nor is your name not Master Cesario. Nor is this my nose, neither. Nothing that is so is so. I prithee vent thy folly somewhere else. Thou knowest not me. Shall I vent to her that thou art coming? I prithee, foolish Greek, depart from me. There's money for thee. If you tarry longer, I shall give worse payment. Now, sir, have I found you again? There is for you! <laughs> oh, oh, Andrew, Andrew. Why, there's for thee, and there, and there, are all the people mad. This I will tell my lady straight. I would not be in some of your coats for two pence. What now, sir? Nay, let him alone. I shall go another way toward him. I shall have an action of battery against him. Uh, come, my young warrior. Put up your iron. You are well fleshed. Come on. I will be free from thee. What wouldst thou now, if thou darest tempt me further? What? What? Nay, now I'll have an ounce or two of this malapert's blood. <laughs> on thy life, I charge thee, hold. Madam? Be not offended, dear Cesario. Be gone. I prithee, gentle friend, come with me to my house and hear there how many fruitless pranks this ruffian hath botched up, that thereby thou mayst smile at it. Thou shalt not choose but go. Do not deny. Nay, come, I prithee. Wouldst thou be ruled by me? Madam. I will, then say so and so be. <sighs> to him, sir.
What ho, I say? Peace in the prison. Who calls there? Sir Topaz, the curate, come to visit Malvolio, the lunatic. Sir Topaz, Sir Topaz, good Sir Topaz. Go to my lady. Thou hyperbolical fiend, how vexest thou this man? Talkest thou nothing but of ladies? Well said. Sir Topaz, never was man thus wronged. Good Sir Topaz, do not think I am mad. They have laid me here in hideous darkness. By thou dishonest Satan. I call thee by thy most modest terms. Sayest thou the house is dark? As hell, Sir Topaz. Why it hath bay windows transparent, and complainest thou of obstruction? I am not mad, Sir Topaz. I say to you, this house is dark. Madman, thou errest. There is no darkness but ignorance. I say this house is as dark as ignorance, though ignorance were as dark as hell. And I say, never was man thus abused. <laughs> Fare thee well. Remain thee still in darkness. Fare thee well. No, oh, Sir Topaz. Sir Topaz! My most exquisite Sir Topaz. Nay, I am for all waters. To him in thine own voice, bring me news of how thou findest him. I would we were rid of this knavery. Come you, by and by, to my chambers? Robin, tell me how thy lady does. Fool. My lady is unkind, pretty. Fool. Who calls, huh? Good fool. As ever thou wilt deserve well at my hand, help me to a candle and pen, ink and paper. As I am a gentleman, I will live to be grateful to thee for it. Master Malvolio? Aye, good fool. How fell you beside your five wits? Oh, good fool. Never was man so notoriously abused. I am as well, good fool, in my wits as thou art. But just as well? Tch. Then you're mad indeed if you be in your wits only as well as a fool. They have your property you. Keep me in darkness. Send ministers to me. Asses. And do all they can to face me out of my wits. Advise what you say. The minister is here. Malvolio! Thy wits the heavens restore. Endeavor thyself to sleep and leave thy vain babble babble. Sir Topas. Maintain no words with him, good fellow. Uh, who I, sir? No, no, not I, sir. God be with you, good Sir Topas. Merry amen. Fool, 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 I say. Oh, I, sir. Be patient. What say you, sir? I'm Jennifer speaking with you. Good fool. Some ink? Paper and light, and convey what I will set down to my lady. It shall advantage thee more than ever the bearing of a letter did. I'll help you to it. But tell me truly, are you not mad, or do you but counterfeit? Believe me, I am not. I tell thee true. Nay, I'll never believe a man until I see his brains. I'll fetch you light and paper and ink. Oh, good fool, I'll requite it in the highest degree. Go, be gone, I pray. I am gone, sir, and anon, sir, I'll be with you again. This is the air. That is the glorious sun this pearl she gave me, I do feel it and see it. And though tis wonder that enwraps me thus, yet tis not madness. Where's Antonio then? I could not find him at the elephant, yet there he was, and there I found this credit that he did range the town to seek me out. His counsel now might do me golden service. For though my soul disputes well with my sense that this may be some error, 
but no madness. Yet doth this accident and flood of fortune so far exceed all instance, all discourse, that I am ready to distrust mine eyes and wrangle with my reason that persuades me to any other trust but that I am mad. Or else the lady's mad. Yet, if twere so, she could not sway her house, command her followers, take and give back affairs and their dispatch with such a smooth, discreet, and stable bearing as I perceive she does. There's something in it that is deceivable. Yet here the lady comes. Blame not this haste of mine. If you mean well, go with me now and with this priestess into the chantry by. There before her and under that consecrated roof, plight me the full assurance of your faith. What do you say? I'll follow this good woman and go with you. <laughs> and having sworn truth, ever will be true. <laughs> then lead the way, good lady. Fetch my volio hither. D did he write this? I'm Adam. How now, my volio? Madam, you have done me wrong, notorious wrong. Have I, my volio? No. Lady, you have. Pray you, peruse that letter. You must not now deny that that is your hand. Write from it if you can, in hand or phrase, or tell me tis not your seal nor your invention. You can say none of this. Well, grant it then, and tell me, in the modesty of honor, why you bade me come smiling and cross guarded to you to put on yellow stockings, and to frown upon Sir Toby and the lighter people. Why have you suffered me to be imprisoned, kept in a dark house, visited by the priest? Tell me why! Alas, Malvolio, this is not my writing. Though I confess much like the character, though out of question, tis Mariah's hand. And now I bethink me, t'was she who first told me thou wast mad. Prithee, be content. This practice hath most shrewdly passed upon thee, and when we discover the grounds and authors for it, thou shalt be both plaintiff and judge for thine own cause. Good madam, hear me speak, and let no quarrel nor no brawl. In hope it shall not, most freely I confess. Myself and Toby set this device against Malvolio. Mariah writes the letter at Sir Toby's great importance. How with a sportful malice it was followed may rather be plucked on laughter than on vengeance. If that the injuries be justly weighed that have on both sides passed. <sighs> Alas, poor fool, how they have baffled thee. Why, some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. I was one part in this interlude, one Sir Topaz, sir. But that is all one. By the Lord, fool, I am not mad. <laughs> and thus the whirligig of time brings about his revenge. I'll be revenged on the whole pack of you. He hath been most notoriously abused.
Belong you to the Lady Olivia, friend? I, sir, were some of her trappings. I know thee well. How dost thou, my good fellow? Truly, sir, the better for my foes and the worse for my enemies. Thou shall not be the worse for me. There's gold. If you will let your lady know that I am here and wish to speak with her and bring her along with you, it may awaken my bounty further. Mary, sir, lullaby to your bounty. I go, sir, but as you say, sir, let your bounty take a nap. I'll wake it anon. Here comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. That face of his I do remember well. Ah. Orsino? This is that Antonio, here in the streets. Desperate of shame and state in private brabble did we apprehend him. He did me kindness, sir, drew on my side, but in conclusion put strange speech upon me. I know not what t'was but distraction. Notable pirate, thou saltwater thief, what foolish boldness has brought thee to their mercies whom thou, in terms so bloody and so dear, hast made thine enemies. Orsino, noble sir, be pleased that I shake off these names you give me. Antonio never yet was a thief nor pirate, <laughs> though I do confess on ground on base enough, Orsino's enemy. The witchcraft drew me hither. That most ungrateful boy there by your side, from the rude seas and rage and foamy mouth did I redeem. A wreck past hope he was. His life I gave him and did thereto add my love. For his sake did I expose myself, pure for his love, into the danger of this adverse town. True to defend him when he was beset. How can this be? When came he to this town? Today, my lord. But for no interim, not a minute's vacancy, both day and night did we keep company. Here comes the Countess. Now heaven walks on earth, but for thee, fellow, thy words are madness. Take him aside. What would my lord, but that he may not have wherein Olivia may seem serviceable? Cesario, you do not keep promise with me, madam. Gracious Olivia. What do you say, Cesario? Still so cruel. Still so constant, lord. What? To perverseness? You uncivil lady whose ingrate and unauspicious alters my soul the faithfulest offerings hath breathed out that e'er devotion tendered. What shall I do? Even what it please, my lord, that shall become him. But hear me this. Since you to non-regardance cast my faith, and that I partly know the instrument that screws me from my true place in your favor, live you the marble-breasted tyrant still. But this, your minion, whom I know you love, and whom I swear I tender dearly. Him I will tear out of that cruel eye. Come, boy, with me. I'll sacrifice the lamb that I love to spite a raven's heart within a dove. Come, away. Whither, my lord? Cesario, husband, stay. Her husband, Sira? No, my lord, not I. Alas, it is the baseness of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy propriety. Fear not, Cesario, take thy fortunes up. Oh, thou dissembling cub. What will thou be when time has so to grizzle on thy case? Or will not else thy craft so quickly grow that thine own trip shall be thine overthrow? Farewell. And take her. But direct thy feet where thou and I henceforth will never meet. My lord, I do protest. Do not swear. Hold little faith, though thou hast too much fear. Oh. 
Pardon me, sweet one. Antonio. Oh, my dear Antonio. How have the hours racked and tortured me since I have lost thee? Sebastian, are you? Fearest thou that, Antonio? Have you made division of yourself? An apple cleft in two is not more twin than these two creatures. Which is Sebastian? One face, one voice, one habit, and two persons. Do I stand there? I never had a brother. Nor can there be that deity in my nature of here and everywhere. I had a sister, whom the blind waves and surges have devoured. Such a Sebastian was my brother too. So went he suited to his watery grave. Were you a woman, as the rest goes even, I should my tears let fall upon your cheek and say, thrice, welcome, drowned Viola. If nothing lets to make us happy both, but this, my masculine usurped attire, do not embrace me till each circumstance of time, place, fortune do cohere and jump that I am Viola. So come to lady, you have been mistook, but nature to her biased you in that. You would have been contracted to a maid. More are you therein by my life deceived. You are betrothed both to a maid and man. Be not amazed, right noble is his blood. If this be so, as yet the glass seems true, I shall have share in this most happy wreck. Boy. Thou hast said to me a thousand times, thou never shouldst love woman as to me. And all those sayings will I overswear. And those swearings keep as true in soul as doth that orbit continent that fire severs day from night. My lord, so please you, these things further thought on, to think as me as well as a sister as a wife. One day crown the alliance on it, so please you, here at my house and at my proper cost. Madam? I am most apt to embrace your offer. Your master quits you. And for your service done him, so much against the metal of your sex, so far beneath your soft and tender breeding, and because you called me master for so long. Here is my hand. You shall from this time forward be called your master's mistress. <laughs> <laughs> 